Good morning. Welcome to our Tai Chi Chi Kung internal martial arts class for this Tuesday morning. I don't know about where you are, but uh, I've got the uh, snow shaker going on outside. Beautiful snow coming down. That's why it should be in the winter. Okay, uh, we have been working on uh, the last pass of the short Tai Chi set, the Beijing form. Uh, we spent some time on the palm, palm, and back fist. Uh, we've been looking at the clearing and pushing. Uh, we had a quick look at the parry and punch last week. Uh, we're also going to look at, and for people who do some of the Xing Yi Chuan, you're going to recognize it's a little bit like metals uh, approach, where you're going to come through with a lead hand palm. And pretty much if you've been working with me for a while, you've taken some time to go through taking Tiger to the mountain. What we're going to try and do is string all those together so that we get the final pass of the set. We'll make it kind of a little micro form all of its own and we're going to work on that over the next couple of weeks trying to look at the individual pieces but bring that all together as well. Okay let's just uh, settle in, we'll get the feet in the ground and the tongue to the roof of the mouth and just gently inhale looking up and exhale down. Again, inhale and rise. And exhale to settle. One more time, rising up. And down. And now we're looking from side to side. Loosening up the neck. We're going to work our way through all the joints in the body to warm them up. So we're going to hang the head to one side and then hang the head to the other. Get a nice feeling of heaviness in that opposite arm and shoulder. One more time on the first side and the second. Let's continue to work through the range of the neck. So we're going to drop the chin down, do a half circle and hang to one side. So many of us. Keep a whole lot of tension in the upper shoulders and neck area. So I'll give it a chance to just kind of work some of that out. Now we're going to do a full circle with the, with the neck, but we don't want to pinch at the base of the skull. So we're going to close the jaw and think about pushing the chin forward and up. As we make a circle around, we'll do that one more time in this direction. So think of it more about kind of stretching out around the throat. Then about pinching at the base of the neck. That's it. Okay, working on the shoulders as we work our way through the different joints in the body. Up nice and high. Squeeze back and hold for a second and then let it come down. So forward and up. Squeeze back and settle. And one last time. Forward and up and back. And, down. and then you can reverse. You're going to come up the back, around in the front, and down. Same thing. Bring it way up high as you can. Keep it there as you come forward, and then let it drop. We'll do one more of those. So shoulders working. Good. Let's take it more into the rotator of the shoulder. So we're going to cross the arms, up over the head, and out. Now we're not looking for a lot of range behind the body. We're just kind of rolling the, the, the shoulder through a range in the front part of the body. So up and around and down. And then we'll reverse that. We'll go the other way. Down through the front and out the sides. Okay, let's open up the side of the body. So this is a cross body setup. Opposite leg pushes in the ground, pushes the hand up and keep the rib cage up towards the ceiling as you rest that arm and hang. Try to lean forward or back. Try to really push that rib cage up. And then same to the other side. So cross body, push down into the one leg and up into the ribs and hang. We'll do that one more time on the first side. And 
command on the second. Okay, both warming up the joints and getting the brain in motion here. We're gonna bring the hands over the head, we're gonna turn the upper trunk, and then we're gonna let the arms drop. So we're gonna warm up the spine by twisting and rising the arms, and then twisting and settling the arms. Twist to rise and settle. We'll do one more loop through, rise and settle, and then we're gonna reverse over and down that's it twist now try not to let this be in your knees and your ankles let your knees and your ankles stay facing forward and let this twisting be in your spine one last time around and down let's take that same twisting in the spine we're going to loosen things up and again knees and ankles stay still and we're letting the trunk turn and just letting the arms wrap around the body Okay, we'll stretch out the shoulder a bit. You don't have to pull too hard. You're going to reach one arm under the other cradle and draw across. And then same on the other side, cradle and draw. Now with this next one, it's not about pulling the arm behind your head. It's kind of mostly about holding the elbow where you can and letting the shoulder rest down. That's it. And same on the other side, let it rest down. Good. And then behind the back, I'm gonna give a little bit of a pull. And then same on the other side. And then just one more time, let those arms go loose as you twist the trunk from side to side. Okay, warm up the hips. I'm gonna swing those hips around one way. Remember for a hip rotation, the head stays fairly stationary and it's the hips going around. So we're not gonna do a trunk rotation. We want those hips to roll. And the other way. So head fairly still in the center and the hips moving one more time. The first way and the second. Okay, let's go right into the ball and socket of the hip. So heel on the ground, let that toe rock in and out. And same on the other side. Hips are one of those things that we really want to take the time to take care of because they're so important to so much of our mobility. So toe on the ground now, let the heel rock in and out. And toe on the ground, let the heel rock in and out. Okay, so we've twisted that. Now we're gonna roll it around that ball and socket joint. So we're gonna turn in, we're gonna come across, we're gonna lift up, we're gonna turn out and down. In and up, out and down. In and up, out and down. Last time, up and around. Down, we'll do that with the other leg. In and out, in and out. One more time, in and out. And then we'll take it the opposite way from the outside, across. Good, so we're working that range of motion of your ball and socket joint of the hip. Let's take it to the other leg. So we're starting with the toe out. We're lifting it up, we're coming across and down. Good. And shake out the legs. I'm going to put the feet together, let the knees roll around one way. And the knees can roll around the other. One more time, the first way and the second. Let's wake up those hamstrings and stretch down towards the ground. Good. And roll and come on up again. 
Okay, last week we were working a little bit on focusing on our feet on the ground, the idea of releasing tension in the toes and sort of spreading and settling the root into the ground. And we're using an exercise from the 20 Qigong. We're gonna continue with that again this week as sort of our, our starting up Qigong exercise. So this one is gonna start where you're gonna place the heel down on one foot. And the first part of this is a, is a roll through the ball and the heel. And for a moment, there's a balance point here where we've got our heel in the air and the ball of the foot in the air. But notice that my head height has not changed to come up on the ball of the foot. So I'm not pushing up onto the ball of the foot. I'm releasing in my hip and able to raise my heel. I'm gonna roll through. I wanna push those toes in the ground as I do so to kind of work through that, that gate. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, heel down. I wanna try and pop up on that back foot without raising my head. But now I'm gonna roll through the toes one way and then I'm gonna to go to the top of the foot and pull. On the way back, I'm gonna squeeze those toes in the ground for another stretch. I'm gonna roll through. So now I'm on the ball and heel again. And then I'm gonna do a calf stretch where I kind of push the heel in the ground and I pull the toes back towards my shin. I'm gonna stretch the toes in the ground. I'm gonna roll back, I'm gonna stretch the calf. Now we're gonna pull that left foot in and we're gonna step the other foot out and we're gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna go on the other side. I wanna lift up and balance as I roll through. I'm gonna balance as I roll through. I'm gonna stretch the top of the foot. I'm gonna stretch the ball of the foot. I'm gonna stretch the calf. I'm gonna step back stretch the calf and step in. And we'll do that on the first side again. So heel down, not bobbing up, staying level as you pick up that heel and roll, as you pick up the heel and roll and stretch the top of the foot, stretch the ball of the foot, stretch the calf, touch the toe, step back, stretch that calf as you roll through, step in and change. So we're gonna go roll through the gate, one, roll through your step, and then right to the top of the foot, squeeze the toes in the ground, stretch the calf, squeeze the toes in the ground, stretch the calf, draw in. We're gonna do one more on each foot leg. So step out, roll through the gate, Roll through your gait and stretch the top, roll back, stretch the calf, heel and ball of foot, and then settle the heel to stretch the calf. One last time on the other side. Roll through, roll through, and top of foot, ball of foot, calf. That's it, ball of foot, calf, and in. Okay, we're gonna do one more uh, piece of work from the 20 Qigong before we get into uh, some of our other Qigong work. And this is uh, from the hips, strengthening hips, strengthening quads, a little bit of uh, hamstring strengthening as well. So the first exercise from here is we're gonna shift the weight into one leg. So we're gonna do some balance. We're gonna lift the knee up. Or we're gonna try and get it about as high as the belt line. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the hip so that the ankle comes up to the inside. Then we're gonna set that down, step it out, and we're gonna do the same on the other leg. So we're sinking in. We wanna organize over our base of support. Center, head, all balanced over the base of support. We're gonna lift the knee, we're gonna turn that foot inwards, and then we're gonna step. So up, turn in, and settle and down. Again, not much up and down. We wanna keep the head fairly level. So I'm still sitting a little bit in the weight-bearing leg. I'm not straight with that leg. Take it back to the second side, or the first side one more time. And in, we're gonna do one more of these on the other leg. 
So I step out, lift, and turn in. Okay, second phase of this exercise is a little harder. We're going to lift up the leg. We're going to try and turn out so that the ankle is rising, but we're not going to cock the pelvis sideways. We're going to just lift that ankle. And down. If you want to learn how to do side kicks, this is one of the range of motion exercises that you want to work on. It's difficult to get that rotation in the femur. In and down, back to the first side. So up, organize yourself over the base of support, out with that ankle, and then in and down, up and out. And we'll do one more on each leg. So back on that first side. And ankle out, down, same on the other side, up and out, in and down. Okay, now we're going to work on the quads a bit. So we're going to bring that knee up as high as we can, and then we're going to extend the heel away from the body. And then in and down, slide through center. Get that weight over the base. Draw in with the hip and out with the heel. In and down. Again, on that first side, up and out. In and down. Out. In. And down, we'll do one more on each leg. So draw that leg as close to your chest as you can, and then extend the heel. In, down, flow the weight from one leg down into the other. Sink the tailbone, raise the knee, extend the heel. And down. Okay, third one. Third one is going to be a hamstring uh, strengthening. So we're going to shift the weight. We're going to pull the heel up towards the bum. Try not to put a lot of tension in your ankle. Your ankle isn't going to, tightening your ankle and your calf isn't going to help this. You want to work in the hamstring. So shift the weight, catch the balance, pull that heel up towards your bum. But try not to tighten up your toes. Try not to pull a lot of strain and tension into the ankle. That's it. So lift, draw that up and down, over and draw in and up. And then last one, draw that in, lift it up. And down. Uh, and shake out your legs a little bit. Okay, let's warm up the, the trunk. And we're going to do that with one of our uh, exercises from the Ichuan system. So we're going to start out with our palms in the post uh, stationary Qigong post position. We're going to hold that frame. And to start out, we're going to turn our trunk, not our knees and our ankles. And then we're going to return the trunk to center. And we're going to turn the trunk the other way. Now, like the last exercise where we we're trying not to build up a uh, strain or, or tension in the ankles and feet, in this case, we don't want to build up tension in the shoulders, in the arms and the wrists. We want to focus on folding into the hip and turning through the trunk while keeping the knees and the toes facing forward. So we're gonna work that range of motion right from the tailbone, right up into the shoulders, through the, uh, up through the spine. We're turning from side to side. So now we're gonna activate the shoulder blades. 
So as we turn the trunk, we're going to think drop down with the shoulder, and then we're going to turn the trunk and drop the other side while the first side comes to neutral. So we're going to turn. So we're going to come past that position. We're going to turn one side and the other. This is one of my favorite exercises for coordinating the rotations in the spine to translate into motion in the arm through the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade and collarbone area are active. You could almost feel that if you put a hand on your collarbone, that's dropping, it's returning to neutral, it's dropping, it's going forward, returning to neutral. So you've got this activity in the shoulder blade area, and that's combined with the turning of the trunk and the sitting in the, in the hips. And what we want to have is a feeling that, of course, the ground is connected to this, that as we twist and turn, we don't want to pull our root out of the ground, rocking our ankles and rolling through that. We want to feel that as we turn the trunk, that it's right there and we're connected to the ground. Now, what I want to turn this into, because it's going to link a little bit to our last section of the Tai Chi, is I want you to come through and big old uppercut. Come through, get a sense of throwing an uppercut. So one hand's pulling back, the other one's striking. You don't have to go to the fist, but as a bit of a study in, in getting this idea of using the, the, the waist and the trunk to help deliver power into the fist. This is a good exercise for that. Yeah, just a couple more. And now let's switch the rotation of this circle. So if we go back to our neutral position, now we're going to turn the trunk over. We're going to let the bottom hand drop and the top hand come out at shoulder height. We're going to pick up that back hand. We're going to let the front hand drop and we're going to turn the trunk. So now we're engaging our shoulder blades in the trunk to turn those arms in the opposite circle. So we're pushing out. And this is also going to link to the section where we're kind of coming through with the palm, coming through with the palm that we're gonna get in that section of the Beijing form that we're gonna try and learn over the next few weeks. So press with the palm. If you wanna think about the palm a bit more, you can think about pulling and pushing pulling and pushing. And that pulling and pushing is not two individual arms pulling and pushing. It's a rotation around the central column of the spine that allows one arm to extend and the other to withdraw. Extend and withdraw. Now a good exercise in coordination is to change. Roll one way, change, go the other way. So that you can, you know, think like a old school 90s DJ. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You can move that one way or the other, and kind of changing, you're shifting. And like everything to do with internal arts, the limbs are not uh, working independently of the core. The core is in charge of this. Now, if you want to forget about a fixed standing position, and see if you can change your route from one leg to another while still engaging all of that rotation in the trunk and in the hips. You could be walking, you could be changing it, you could be going to palms, you could be going to uppercut and palms. And we keep working that same exercise. One, two, changing. Now you can change your focus. Yeah, I don't want to worry about uppercuts. I want to think about rising elbows. I want to think about descending elbows. I want to think about those palms from one angle or another. I might want to turn this into forward cutting style elbows. 
spearing with fingertips. There's all sorts of different ways because just about any shape of arm, hammering with the fists, throwing those back fists, come from rolling this circle. All, almost all the motion is gonna come from turning the trunk with a nice solid root connected. And what you do is you change the rotations in the arms and the directions of the hands to change exercise. You can change this exercise to focus on things happening behind, like elbows behind you or elbows behind you. For people who grapple and grab, this idea of holding somebody and pulling their tailbone in and pushing their upper body away, of cranking underneath and rolling and throwing, it's just a good way to learn how to coordinate all of that coming from rotation in the spine and settle in the legs. Okay, come on up. I should get a trunk moving around a little bit. Let's do today a little bit of deep uh, leg stretching. This comes from the wild goose set. And what we're gonna do, um, and now you can think of this both as just a physical stretch uh, some people also like to engage with this exercise with a, a sense of sort of energetic work as well. With the energetic work, you're going to imagine you're kind of pulling energy and smoothing energy down in the legs. So you're kind of going to be carrying it from one side to the other. So if you want to engage that part of the yi, that part of the intent, you can. So you can imagine pulling up. We're going to carry to one leg. And now imagine you're just kind of smoothing everything down as you hang down as you stretch towards the ground then we're going to turn those palms up and we're going to draw up the leg we're going to carry it over and we're going to press it down on the other side Good. We're going to carry that up. We're going to carry it over to the first side again. So we're going to hang down. We're going to stretch down towards the ground. Try to let your head go. Let your shoulders go. And draw it up from the ground. Carry it over to the second side, turn it over, and holding down, stretching down, hanging down towards the ground. And draw it up. We're going to do one more on either side. So we're going to pull that up. We're going to carry it back to the first side and stretch it down. And then up. Now remember with this kind of stretching, it's not about forcing, always in Qigong, in the soft style Qigong, it's not about forcing anything. It's about allowing the body a chance to release and adjust. So move into the stretch, find the area that's the tightest, target it with your mind and with your breath, and coax it to let go. Okay, come on up from the ground and we'll walk in those legs a little bit. Okay. Let's do some lunge work to uh, work on leg strength. So we'll combine that up today with the arm work of Take Tiger to the Mountain, because that's in our sequence that we're trying to work on this month. So we're going to take these feet uh, wider than shoulder work, uh, work, shoulder width. The more work you want, the wider the legs are going to go. So one of the base structures of this is being able to fold into one hip and open and extend. So a lot of talk in, in Tai Chi and, and internal is about opening and closing 
of the joints. In this case, we're closing the hip on one side and we're opening it on the other. As we come through the center point, both are gonna be closed and then we're gonna fold one deeper and open one up. You wanna get your tailbone underneath and you might feel a, a, a stretch along the front of this hip if you're kind of sitting in there fairly deep. So tailbone is underneath, a slight engagement in the lower pelvic area helps to keep that tailbone there. And what we want to imagine is this cross body feeling that if I push through one leg, I can reach over to the other side of the body. Now with the arms, we're going to end up doing some circles, but right now what I want you to do is just go push from the leg and try to make a line from your fingertips to the straight leg. Nice line through the body. Push through. Find that line from the fingertips. So if somebody was to push on your fingertips, you could transfer their, their push right down into that leg in the ground. One more on each side like that. So twist, get a feel, push the ground in. Now, more complex is going to be taking Tiger to the mountain. We're going to take the arms over the head. We're going to push out of that leg. We're going to extend and settle. Then we're going to come through center to close the arms. And then there's that push through the leg and over the head. And down and through the middle. That's it. Really challenging to keep that tailbone underneath you. It's really gonna to wanna to poke out and kind of bum out and chest up. We want that tailbone under us. Let's take it to the other side for a moment. So now we're gonna scoop on the opposite side and come across. Good. Scoop under. And come over. We'll just do two more. And these are exercises, you know, sometimes we just do a couple of, of runs through them in a class, but you can spend lots of time with these exercises, if you really want to build some strength in those legs, increase the repetitions, increase the depth. Good. Okay, let's walk in those legs. I see our time disappearing, and we're going to focus now on our sequence from the Beijing set. So we spent, if you were with us uh, in December, we were doing a lot of this palm, palm, and back fist work. So we were doing that with an inside turn. So we're turning around. This is potentially lots of throwing techniques in here. And then we're gonna step out and back fist. So we're just gonna take it as a back and forth for now. That means we shift the weight into the back leg. We're reaching over with that arm we're turning in with the other leg. We're going to sit back on that leg, draw in the foot, and then step out to back fist. Roll back, turn in, and back fist out. Good. Roll back. Shoulder, elbow strikes, hand strikes, claws. There's lots of striking in here. Uh, this idea of weight bearing or sinking under and throwing. Somebody could be in here. And then we're going to step out and back fist. Just a couple more. Palm, palm, back fist. Good. Palm, palm, back fist. Now remember, we're trying to build everything from the ground. So if I'm waiting, in this case for me, I'm waiting my left leg and I'm gonna be striking with my right arm. I have to think about pushing the ground with my left leg to get my right arm to strike. Okay, so let's look at one of the other pieces we've been 
doing from this sequence. And that's this clear arm and push technique. So we're going to take it from a forward bow position here. And palms are going to be up in a push. We're going to turn the palm up on our back leg. And we're going to sit back with the front arm and clear underneath. So one is pulling back, one is kind of bracing. This is sometimes called indexing, where you kind of touch and then fire away. So we're gonna index a little and then we're gonna shove. So we're coming under. For people who have, who have done some uh, uh, Filipino style arts, they have this concept of passing, where you're kind of passing arms across the body. This can link to those kind of exercises a little bit. And then push. Now, if you want to work a little bit on heavier pushes, you can pull in the foot and step into those pushes. So you can clear that hand, or clear, sorry, we're doing the Beijing one, so palm up, clear the hand, and then you could push into position. You could clear the hand. You could think about shifting back and pushing. But the concept is one arm under the other as we sit in and then transfer and push. Let's try that with the other leg forward. So we're going to clear and we're going to push. We're going to roll back. We're going to clear that arm and then we're going to push and again you can work on you know changes of angles to go with this shifting back if you find uh, i'm not quite getting the coordination of this enough to start changing angles and things that's okay just just work this nice solid platform like everything in tai chi not so yin that you fall backwards, not so yang that you're being toppled forward. It's an exploration in your range of motion without compromising your overall balance. So balance is paramount without stability. There's no power base. There's no ability to absorb and redirect somebody else's energy. And there's not much potential for delivering your own energy. Okay, come on up. We've been working on that one for a few weeks. I hope it's starting to come together a little bit for you. Um, so let's look at the last piece of this puzzle. The last piece of this puzzle, for people who have done Repulse Monkey with me in the past, where we're kind of stepping back and palm striking as we step backwards, you're going to see some similarities, but this is step forward with palm. So we're going to go step and palm strike. So for now, what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of reset this. We're going to go from our back fist position, and we're just going to kind of keep resetting it for now. We're going to roll back with our arm, and then we're going to sit into our front leg, and only the heel is going to touch and we're going to have this hand kind of in a fist at our side our bottom hand and we're pressing with the palm so we've gone back fist now we're going to roll back and step and press with the palm Good. back fist roll back and Press with the palm. I do that a couple more times. So to keep it the same as the set right now, I would suggest going with the right leg forward. I'll switch this up. Maybe it will uh, be easier to follow from the other side. So from this back fist, my right leg is forward. I'm going to step in and I'm going to pull and push. So I'm drawing one from the other. So I've got my back fist. I'm going to draw back and pull and push. Okay, so that's the first half of this, of this section. Um, and the second half of it 
is parry and uppercut. So we'll just try that on its own for a moment. So you're kind of scooping with the palm. There's your, your parrying. Could be anywhere in that arc, the, the, the possibilities. But parry and this hand is going to go draw back. So we get this feeling here. And a good way to kind of play with figuring out the, the mechanics inside of this is this idea of pull, push, and rotate that arm out slightly. Sit in the back leg. Push from the back leg and uppercut. Now, like we were doing in Take Tiger to the Mountain, where we had this nice line from the ground to the hand, middle knuckle, nice line right into the racing back foot. So we're pushing that into place. No up, no down, no wrist funkiness. You want a nice straight line to your middle knuckle. So we're going pull. This is where you get these ideas in, in Gung Fu called bow and arrow concepts, where you feel like you're pressing against the bow and drawing on the string and then letting the arrow fly. So you're pulling back and then you're punching out. You're pulling back and you're punching out. Just a couple more. Pull back, scoop, punch. Sit in your back hip in a way that it feels like it's creating potential. Don't move back in a way that feels like it's going to collapse. When you're sitting back here, you know, imagine somebody big stumbling into you, and could you kind of brace out with that forward hand, index with that forward hand, and then release that index into your uppercut. Pull, release, pull, release. Now, if you're going to pick up a little speed, the most difficult thing is don't pick up tension with the speed. Stay in this feeling of being, of being loose, but accurate. That's it. Okay, come on up. Just a few minutes here. So let's tie today. Let's tie the back end of the back fist to the parry and uppercut section. So in the set, we will have come over one, two, and three. We're then going to roll back, and we're going to step in and palm. Then we're going to brace. Now, in this case, we're going to lift the knee as we brace to make some more balance work. Step in, which represents this idea that usually with uppercuts, You've got to close some distance anyway. So you're stepping in and throwing the uppercut. I'll take that from the other direction, but I'm going to stay with the arm work the way we'll have it in the set. So I'm going to go through with my back fist. Right hand has made the back fist. I'm going to rock back and open. So there's that push pull. This has a bit of an outwards presser. This has a draw back. And then we're coming through, we're kind of closing in the chest a bit, we're rotating through the hip, we're pushing off the back toe, and we're pressing out. Then we're going to roll and scoop, lift, and punch. Okay, let's try that again. So I'm going to take it from the turnaround this time. So I'm going to go turn, palm, Draw in palm and back fist. Roll back and step through with that left hand and palm. Scoop, lift, and uppercut. And now here's where we're going to clean that arm off. We're going to slide underneath that elbow. We're going to draw back and open the hand. And this is where we're going to integrate the push. Okay, we're almost there. We're going to probably have to come back at it again on, on Thursday. So, palm, draw, back fist. Roll back. 
and step through palm, pull push, lift and uppercut, draw back like taking off that glove and push. The only thing we have left here is to take Tiger to the mountain. So I'm going to take it from the other direction just so you can see my the, the arms from different angles. So I'm going to go palm, palm, then back fist, roll back, and step through, palm, pull back, lift, and uppercut, draw back, and push with the palms. Okay, I hate to leave it there, but we've got to let it go for this morning. And we'll come back, we'll look at putting Tiger to the, taking Tiger to the mountain into that sequence, and we will have our final pass of the Beijing set that you can kind of do as a bit of a micro form and work on. Okay, let's cool it off for today. Shoulders back and forward, arms one way and the other, and a reach to one side. And a reach to the other side. Good. And the last thing is called chi release. If you've had enough reaching to the ground, you can just do this with your arms. If you're okay with the bend forward, then forward and away. And the palms are down, all the way down. So the, the uh, imagery for this is that of smoothing out the energy in the body, putting that energy in the lower abdomen, and rooting that energy into the ground. And at the bottom, there's kind of a little bit of a flick because you're, you're not bringing that energy back up. In class, we're kind of moving energy up and around the body, but the idea at the end of class is to kind of cool down. The goal of an internal arts class is to feel like the whole body has been worked a little bit, but we have a nice sense of potential at the end. So the last movement presses everything down to the ground. I can hold it there. And this is actually a, a standing Qigong all of its own, where you could just spend some time standing and getting a sense of being rooted, deeply rooted, but the top of the head to the heavens. Okay. Thanks for training hard today. We will see you for some more internal arts on Thursday. Uh, if you want to come and join in in about uh, half an hour, we are working on the double-edged sword techniques in our historical weapons class today. Thanks for joining today. If you have any questions, I'll stick around and take a look.